work very closely also to make sure that the US Cotton Trust Protocol can help the brands and retailers. Orders are coming back. I heard the same thing from mills and manufacturers around the world. So I'm quite optimistic for the future. Thank you, I'll be happy to answer and first I want to say how happy I am to be in Bangladesh again. I love this country, I love the hospitality, I love the food um, and so thank you for welcoming me. Thank you so much. Um, so yes, in terms of brands and retailers, so the program was launched in 2020. We have recruited over 40 brands and company as members. So that's been quite an achievement in four years, I have to say. And I want to highlight the two newest members that joined the program. So we've got Kiabi in France and Macy in the US. Um, an interesting also development for us is that Amazon became a member and the US Cotton Trust Protocol has been recognized as climate pledge friendly by Amazon. So a huge achievement for the US Cotton Trust Protocol. We target the global brands around the world um, you know the one that I'm looking after the one that headquartered in Europe and then I've got a colleague who looks after the one headquartered in the US so we've got many brands I would say 50 50 um, US and European but both have importance for us and for the US cotton trust protocol so we want to increase of course the membership for brands and retailers because at the end of the day um, they are the customers of the mills and manufacturers and what the brands want you know is going to increase the consumption of US cotton I would say the major uh, challenges at the moment, as you probably know, are traceability and transparency um, alongside and across the supply chain. It's very important for brands. Um, at the beginning, we saw them wanted more and more data that they could use for the CSR report and to talk and engage with the different stakeholders. But since, traceability has been the number one concern for brands and retailers. Transparency along the supply chain is essential. It's not even, um, I would say, something to wish for is really something that's going to become more and more necessary and the US Cotton Trust Protocol is in a great position to help the brands and the retailers to deliver on that matter so we see us as a program that can help them with the traceable and traceability efforts we really have taken steps to ensure that um, compliance with every new piece of legislation in the US and in the EU it's very important for us to monitor closely what's going on um, especially in the EU I would say because at the moment things are moving very fast with the European Commission, the Green Deal. So we've got a few alignments already in place that we're very proud of. So for example, we do align with the Eco Design for Sustainable Product legislation. We also do align with the textile labeling directive and we do align with the green claim directive. So those are plus for us. We continue to monitor the situation very closely to ensure that we are ready for when the legislation come into place. Same thing in the US, you know about the forced labor directive and then we work very closely also to make sure that the US Cotton Trust Protocol can help the brands and retailers to navigate those laws. I think the mills and manufacturers in Bangladesh are in a particular position to help because they've always been at the forefront, I feel, of transparency and traceability. And as we said, you know, this is what really the brands and retailers want. So mills and manufacturers by having a very transparent supply chain are in a good position to service those brands and to help them achieve their own corporate goals. So it's a, it's a perfect situation, I would say, for the mills and manufacturers. And since we started the program in Bangladesh, we've got 198 members of the US Cotton Trust Protocol. So we hope that the membership will continue to grow. But knowing that we started in 2020, it's already a great achievement. So I'd want to thank also all the mills and manufacturers from Bangladesh to support the program. I would say that since COVID, I mean, obviously it's been some tough situation for a few two years, but we've seen some rebound from the brands and retailers. From what I hear from them, I feel that orders are coming back. I heard the same thing from mills and manufacturers around the world. So I'm quite optimistic for the future.